Here lie the trophies of some of the great hunters of the past. They walk beneath our feet, fly above our heads, and cross our paths. If one desires to find these treasures, he need not look far, but right in front of him. He shall cast in his net and become an insect hunter. Today's episode of The Insect Hunter will be exciting and exhilarating. We'll start off our episode by having Titus teach us about equipment. Then we're going to go to Oracle who will teach us the techniques of pinning. Then Carlos will teach us the right moves so we can spread our insects and bring them to life. After that, Grandpa will give us some fascinating comparisons. Hello there, insect hunters. We're one step closer to mounting our insects and having them ready to display. Today we're talking about pinning, so take a look over here. One of the first things you're gonna need for sure is a set of insect pins. These are special pins that are made especially for insect hunters. You don't wanna use your common, average, everyday pins for insects because eventually they will corrode away over time. The reason we use insect pins is because they have a non-corrosive agent on the outside of them to keep them from wearing away. We want to make sure they're long lasting and that they make our mounts and trophies look great in our showcase. The nice thing about these pins is that they have a nylon tip on the end of them so all the colors will match and they're also very easy to pull out if we need to take a look up close at some of our specimens. They're also the exact same height so everything will look level when we put our insects in there. Insect pins come in a variety of sizes. You can get them in double zero, zero, one, two, three, four. The smaller the number, the thinner the pin. For most collectors and for 4-H projects, a two or a three is perfect for almost all insects. For the advanced collector, they might try using a one, zero, or double zero, which are much thinner and require more precision. If you're trying to get a hold of some insect collecting pins, you can just look them up in Google search or you can look at some of the links in the description below. Another thing you need to get is some styrofoam. This is something real cheap and easy you can find if you just go to a local store and ask them or maybe you've got some lying around from something you've had shipped to you recently. Styrofoam works great because we can pin in it multiple times and keep reusing it when we're pinning our insects and getting them into the position we need so we can put them into the trophy case. I recommend using your styrofoam as a place to dump out your insects and look at them all once you're done killing them. Make sure if you dump out your insects on styrofoam that you keep them very well organized. That is an important and essential thing you have to do in order to prepare for labeling later. I recommend using some paper you can Get a piece of paper, a large label, stick it on the styrofoam, pin it there, and then put your insects around it so you know exactly where you got each one. This saves you the time of having to print out every single label at this point when you're only trying to see what you've got in your collection. Make sure on that paper you write down where you got them and when you got them at. We want to always keep everything labeled and well organized. Another useful thing is a pinning block. This allows you to get all of your insects at a level plane when you do run your pin through them so that when they're in our trophy case, they all look the same. A pinning block can be purchased online in the description below, we'll give you a link, or you can make one yourself. Basically all you do is get some wood and get it to the right height where you want it, and then you're gonna drill a very small hole in there. In order to use your pinning block, what you'll do is get your pin started in your insect Use your forceps to help you out. And then once you have got your pin started, place the insect with the pin right on top and slide the pin into the hole in your pinning block. Slide it all the way down to the bottom and then that will get our insect at that perfect plane for that awesome trophy case. 
If you don't have access to a pinning block, you can do it yourself. All you need to do is take some nice forceps, hold your insect down on the styrofoam, run the pin through, and then you can slide the insect to the right level where you want it to be. This takes a little bit more time and work, but it can look just as good if you know what you're doing. Ah, I thought I foresaw someone coming to visit me. I am the Oracle, he who sees everything. Yes, I'm excited to teach you about pinning. I can foresee in your future masterful techniques being executed. Our lessons will begin shortly while we await my servant who is bringing my insects as we speak. Last week he tricked me by giving me poison. But this week I can foresee he will bring forth bounteous insects for us to practice pinning. Ah, I can hear the footsteps of my servant coming now. Ah, Pantheus, what have you brought? Marvelous. Insects galore. Oh, these insects. Oh, I've never felt insects like these before. They're extremely large and firm. They must be rare. We have to pin them immediately. I'm going to have to use some wood instead of styrofoam to place them in. Now Titus may have told you a little bit about some pin sizes, one, twos, or threes. For these large specimens, we're going to be using some larger pins, preferably 33s or 38s. The first thing you want to do is place your specimens on the board where they will be pinned. Looks like I have them all, of course. And then you're going to find the perfect spot in the insect to place the pin. Here's a diagram you can look at to see where to drive the pins in. If you want to find a copy of this diagram or print one off yourself, I can foresee you clicking in the description below the page. And then you're going to take your pin and place it into the body of the insect you are trying to pin. You want it to be as straight up and down as possible so that it looks really nice when you get that pin finally in there. Ah, marvelous! We are finally finished! Make sure that when you pin your insects, that you place the point of the pin in the right place as demonstrated here and as well as shown in the diagram. Make sure that your insects are perfectly straight on the pin so that it looks really nice, just like these. I can foresee in the future you doing just as good a job as me with your pinning as well. Hola, mis amigos. My name is Carlos. El maravilloso. Normally I teach people how to dance. Today I will teach you how to do the spray. Let's get to it. Ah, let's get started. First we want to heat things up. If you froze your insects, you must pull them out of the fridge now. You want to have a hot dance partner so that when you are on the dance floor, everyone will notice you, just like Carlos. Today I've got a special partner. Uh, her name is Jewel. You must learn to work with dance partners of all sizes if you want to become a master of dance like Carlos. Now let's learn the steps of this dance. It's actually quite simple. There's only quattro steps. Step uno, place your pin through your insect in the proper place. Step two, make sure and adjust the height of your insect so it is at the proper level. Step tres, spread your insect. Step quattro, let it dry. Somebody else has already talked to you about 
Steps 1 y 2. I'm going to tell you a little more about steps 3 y 4. Step 3. We're going to spread the antennae, legs, and wings of our partners. First off, let me tell you, normally when you dance, you do not look at your partner's feet. But in this dance, you can. So it's extra special. Take your partner with you to the dance floor. Be extra gentle. I'm always extra careful when I'm dancing. So I do not step on the feet or smash my partner's leg. Hey, Santa Omega! This is why you are here with Carlos, so you can learn. Luckily, I have another partner with me. Say hello to Carmen. When you are dancing, you always want to make your partner look good. If you are a guy, you want to spin the lady like crazy. They seem to love this. to make sure the body of your insect is in a position so it looks like it's alive. That is all of step 3. Now for step 4. Now you just leave your insect there for a day or two and then you remove the pins and your insect will be in that position for a good time. If you want to learn how to spray the butterflies and moths and other things with wings, you can click on the links below right here. Or look in the description. Now you know everything you need to about the spread. You are ready to do it yourself. Just remember the quattro steps that I teach you and you will have beautiful looking partners just like me. Uh, what? Oh, we're streaming. Oh, back in my day, a stream was running water that you would drink out of when you were not running away from the dinosaurs. Well, on today's episode, I'm supposed to tell you some, uh, oh yes, comparisons, yes. Well, I'm going to tell you first about a butterfly, a couple of them that are pinned. Have a look. As you can see on one side, one of the butterflies is better pinned than the other. You want to make sure that their wings spread out so we can see all of them. The key thing is to make a 90 degree angle with the top wing and then bring the bottom wing just underneath it. Yes, those are some beautiful things. Back in my day, I made a few beautiful things myself. I had to carve my own toys out of wood. It usually took about three years to do it, but when those things broke, it actually meant something, which is different from today. Oh, yeah. oh yes, uh, look at these uh, beetles here. As you can see, uh, one of them has some broken antennae and the other one has really good antennae. You want to make sure all of the parts of your insects are maintained so they don't break apart and so they last a long time. Now that is the truth. Well, back in my day, we just first started to uncover the truth. I was able to witness Christopher Columbus's the world is not flat speech. 
At least that's what I think he was saying because he was speaking in Spanish and I didn't quite understand. But he kept doing motions like this and this. So I'm assuming that's what he was talking about. Let's look at some more comparisons. Here's a couple grasshoppers. As you can see, the way the legs have been positioned truly shows that one of them looks more lifelike than the other. But take a look at those back legs that are beautiful. It looks like that grasshopper's gonna hop off out of that tray there. So that's how we want our insects to look so people can enjoy them as if they saw them in the wild. Well, you guys are some of the best friends I've ever had. I'm glad I can hang out with you. Back in my day, hanging out was a little different. Hanging out was when we would get on a carriage and try and see how much of our body we could hang out of the carriage. That was a lot of fun. I've done it before, but I never actually did it when it was moving because I was too scared. Let's look at a couple more examples. Here you can see a couple bees. As you can see, one of the abdomens on the bees is hanging down a little too far. On the other one, it's been pushed up and set at a good point. My mother always taught me to make sure you didn't have a droopy abdomen. Well, I'm sure glad you took a little time to listen to me. Like my Uncle Milford Brimley Wilford McGee once said, it's easier to do it right than to fix it. So take care of your insects. Thanks for watching another episode of The Insect Hunter. If you've enjoyed this program, make sure and like below, and be sure to subscribe by clicking up here so you can stay up to date with all of our future episodes. If you want to see some of our old episodes and this is your first time watching, go over here and click on previous episodes to see everything we've produced so far. If you want to see the next episode in this series, head over here and you can learn a little bit about labeling and organizing. If you've enjoyed learning about insects as much as I have, there are some logos down below that you can click on to find out more so you can find greater learning experiences beyond what you've been watching. I personally attended Purdue University for a season and I really enjoyed it there. They've got a great program and some great faculty and staff that will help you to learn a lot about insects. So it's a great option for you. Thanks for watching and as always, happy hunting!